Chief Littlechild, uh, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to speak with us. Thank you for uh, the ongoing interest you've taken on the uh, papal visit recently. So why don't we start, um, you know, w with your thoughts on the past year or so and, you know, when we look back on, on all that's happened with the Pope's visit and uh, the possible discoveries of unmarked graves and, and just everything that's happened in the past year or so, what, what do you make of, of it all? Well, it's always a very mixed emotion. Uh, as a matter of fact, as we speak uh, here on my reserve in my community, we're currently underway still with the uh, ground penetration radar work um, near the former residential school site. But also um, the community is still working with others on the uh, truth and reconciliation calls to action in an effort to uh, build bridges among our neighbors and within our own families and so on. Now, I, I want to ask, uh, it, it's been a few months now since, since the papal visit, and um, gifting a headdress to, to Pope uh, Francis, do you regret doing that, looking back now, given some of the reaction that, that's you know, been the reaction of, of a lot of people? Well, notwithstanding the uh, reaction, including um, threats, threats on my life, I have absolutely no regret in uh, what we did because we followed our traditional protocols, we did our ceremonies, we were advised by elders and our committee uh, before we undertook the action of um, uh, gifting the His Holiness Pope Francis with a headdress to um, uh, signify that uh, two things. First of all, he had asked for pardon several times and uh, um, I myself offered forgiveness for what happened to me as a child, but also as a, an act of reconciliation. So personally, I don't regret, regret it at all. So how has the papal visit impacted you uh, personally, Chief Little Child? Well, very emotionally, beginning with uh, the fact that I've probably had six, uh, yeah, six visits with um, former popes and Pope Francis included, uh, trying to secure the call to action that was given to us. But before that, um, trying to advance reconciliation, Pope Francis, who undertook the decision to not only come to Canada, to come to our territory and give the apology to the uh, survivors the families, the communities who've been seeking and waiting a long time for this to happen. So it was mixed emotion uh, in that way that we were successful in um, getting a call to action to be responded to uh, in Canada. Surprisingly, very surprisingly in my own community, uh, and also before that, when we had a pre-meeting with him in Rome, and when he met with us, um, I understand normally he gives guests half an hour. Well, totally he gave uh, all of us, uh, the First Nations, the Métis and the Inuit, five hours of his day to discuss this. Wow. So that in itself signaled a very serious consideration on his part. Now that the Pope has come and apologized on Canadian soil and on First Nations territory, what's next here? You know, what needs to happen in the healing and the, and the reconciliation journey now? Well, I think that we need to continue uh, the work that we've started. <clears throat> reconciliation is a very personal uh, issue and also sometimes a community issue. But when you both put, put both of them together, I think we need to start focusing more on uh, forgiveness, on hope, on love, because uh, these are uh, all calls to action for us to work together. That's really well said there, Chief Littlechild. That's uh, all the time we have uh, for right now. But again, I want to say a big thank you, Miigwech, for taking some time out of your day today to speak with us and then share some of your insight and knowledge. So again, thank you, Miigwech. Thank you. Thank you for your interest.